Good morning, class. Good morning po, sir. Good morning po, sir. Good morning po, sir. Sir, good morning po. Good morning po, sir. Good morning po, sir. Okay, let's have attendance first before we start the lesson for today. First, Mr. Rodriguez, are you there? Sir, they currently have no electricity daw po dahil sa typhoon po. Pabs. Present po. Adrian. Present. VJ. Present. Next, Palranch. Present. And last is Benedict. Present po, sir. For today, we're going to conduct the reporting about the phases in which matter exists, phase change, and the type of change that occurs on matter. Previously, I assigned you a topic to read on about. Now, you shall represent and you, what you have researched and learned in class today. Let's start first with the phases of matter. You may start. Solid matter is composed of tightly packed particles. A solid will retain its shape. The particles are not free to move around. So, can anyone give me an example of a solid? An example of solid is a wall. Thank you, Mr. BJ. Now, let's proceed to the liquid state. So, you may start now. Next is liquid. Liquid matter is made up of more loosely packed particles. It will take the shape of its container. Particles can move about within a liquid, but they are packed densely enough that volume is maintained. Someone please give me an example of a liquid. An example of a liquid is a drinking water. Very good, Adrian. Thank you for answering the question. The last is gas. Gaseous matter is compressed of particles packed so loosely that it has neither a defined shape nor a defined volume. A gas can be compressed. Lastly, anyone give me an example of a gas? An example of gas is carbon dioxide. So thank you very much VJ. So we had talked about the different spaces of matter, but how does ice change to water, and why does a glass of what cold water freeze in room of temperature sweat? We'll cover this in the next topic. Are you still with me, everyone? Uh, yes, Pa, sir. I sure hope because we have an assessment next week. For the next topic, which is about the changes, phase changes, can the next reporter open their camera and microphone then proceed? You can now proceed now. I will now begin my discussion on phase change. There are three states where matter can exist. Those are solid, liquid, and gas. When temperature changes, matter can undergo a phase change, shifting from one form to another. Examples of phase changes are melting, changing from a solid to a liquid, freezing, changing from a liquid to a solid, Evaporation, changing from a liquid to a gas, and condensation, changing from a gas to liquid. Thank you, Mr. Adrian. Excellent discussion from you. With what we learned from Mr. Adrian, can anyone give me a real-life scenario or situation that exhibits space change and explain which and how? So, anyone? Sir, I have one. Okay, Mr. Lawrence, please proceed. When an ice cream melts under high temperature, this scenario exhibits melting the change from solid to liquid due to increase in temperature. Yes, a very good and relatable example from Mr. Lawrence. Next in the line is Mr. Vijay. Kindly share your representation with us. Thank you. Sir, here's my report, and I'll begin now. Changes in matter have two classifications, and there's a common misconception between physical and chemical change, 
people often assume that when the phase change occurs, it's automatically chemical change. However, this is not the case all the time. Let's clear this up first. The difference between a physical reaction and a chemical reaction is composition. In a chemical reaction, this, there is a change in the composition of the substances in question. In a physical change, there is a difference in the appearance, smell, or simple display of a sample of matter with a change in composition. Although we call them physical reactions, no reaction is actually occurring. In order for a reaction to take place, there must be a change in elemental composition of a substance in question. Thus, we will simply refer to physical reactions as physical changes from now on. Thank you, Mr. Vijay and Mr. Benedict, for your comprehensive presentation. Is there any question from the class? You are free to ask your classmates. Sir, question po. Are there any particular indications of chemical change that distinguish it from physical change? That's a great question. As a matter of fact, there are several indicators, some of which are the presence of gas. Changing in color and odor, the formation of bubbles. Noted, sir. Thank you, Pa. So, anybody else who has a question? Okay, so based from your silence, I'm going to assume that there are no more questions or clarifications. Okay? Then, I'll go to our last topic for this session. So, a mole is simply a unit of measurement. Units are invented when existing units are inadequate. Chemical reactions often take place at levels where using grams will make a sense. Yet, using absolute numbers of atoms, molecules, or ions will be confusing too. Like all units, a mole has to be based on something reproducible. A mole of the quantity of anything that has the num same number of particles found in 12.00 grams of ca carbon-12, that number of particles is Avogadro's number, which is roughly 6.02 6 times 10 raised to 23.1. A mole of carbon atoms is 6.02 times 10 raised to 23 carbon atoms. That's it. Any question about moles? None? Then, that will be all. Thank you, class, for doing your task in interactive reporting. I'm very impressed and satisfied with the content of your reports and enthusiasm in today's topics. I hope this will continue for the next session to come. I'll be closing this record lecture. Be ready for your assessment activities. Then okay, that's all for today, class. Goodbye and stay safe. Bye po, sir. Thank you, pa. Goodbye and thank you, sir. Goodbye, pa. Thank you, pa. Thank you, pa. Bye, pa. Goodbye and thank you, sir.